Finance TikTok really had a run, didn't it? In the crypto bull run of 2020 and 21, it was like this endless supply of young finance bros popping up out of nowhere with incredible investment advice about how you can make $10 million by investing in a coin called Gum Rocket. Can I please have some gummies? Well, the market went absolutely belly up this year and smoked every prepubescent noob that thought it was going to be up only. And what do you know? These finance experts are nowhere to be seen now. Where are you at, young crypto bros? Oh, I know, they're living in their parents' basement throwing darts at a picture of Elon Musk after buying the top of Dogecoin and getting absolutely wrecked. Rest in pepperoni to those fallen warriors. Fortunately though, what I affectionately like to call money TikTok still exists and it's as amazing as you can imagine, but you don't have to imagine it because I got a few I'm gonna share with you right now. How much I spent on a date night as a married couple with a baby and a net worth of $500,000 in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> Uh -huh. Right off the bat, I'm obsessed with this video. Like, it couldn't have just been a TikTok about how much it costs for a night out in Cincinnati with your lovely wife. No, you had to, like, throw your net worth in there for some reason. The fuck your net worth have to do with it? Like, leave a little bit to mystery. Go out on your beautiful date with your beautiful wife while we watch from the comfort of our couch, sad and alone, and see you spend a ton of money on this incredible picturesque evening that you can share forever in the memory of this TikTok. But and then let us guess how much you're worth. But no, you gotta ruin it right off the bat. Nothing's fun anymore. We went to this restaurant called Eno Kitchen and the vibes were a I can't, I can't. I'm stopping this video like every five seconds. <laughs> oh man. I'm sure they're like the nicest couple and this dude probably means well, but f absolute lemmings, bro. Like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> thank you for watching this date night with my wife and my 500K net worth. We went to this restaurant and the vibes were immaculate. They have to be robots, right? It felt like a really, really financially literate man's version of Nobu in Malibu, California, except in the Midwest and without the Pacific Coast. There you go. Gassing himself up a bit now. Only financially illiterate men go to places like Nobu, like the most expensive restaurant in New York. Mr. Financially Literate 500K Net Worth, on the other hand, I find immaculate vibes at a discount because of my financial literacy. We started off with some fun drinks, $13 for my wife's, $12 for mine. There you go. Here's me checking my net worth to remind myself that it's okay to spend $25 on two drinks. I'm sorry, no, bro, bro, no, no, bro. The next day, he pulled out the portfolio at the dinner table to show the camera the subtle portfolio flex. Oh my god, 12 and 13 dollar drinks, first of all, are not expensive at all. That's standard rate for an alcoholic beverage, cheaper than you'd find probably around the Boston area where I live. Let me just double check the net worth I already mentioned at the beginning of this TikTok to make sure I can afford these 12 dollar drinks. Oops, half a million dollars. Looks like I can. Ow. Here's me checking my net worth to remind myself that it's okay to spend $25 on two drinks. This shit is hilarious because all the years I worked in the restaurant industry, I couldn't even pay rent, but I never had to remind myself it was okay to spend $200 on a bar tab on a night out with my friends. I was also a degenerate piece of shit for a while, but the point remains. <laughs> Absolutely clown world, man. Look how cute my wife is. I'm so blessed. The vibes are immaculate. I'm so blessed. This guy's a lemming, dude. And my wife got a black bean burger and some potatoes. And then we shared their famous food crispy looks actually really sprout delicious. Kale salad. The food. It was so good. Yeah. And then I scarfed on every last piece of food to make sure we got our money's worth. And then we had two members of the Clean Plate Club. Oh, uh, two members of the please. <laughs> two members of the Clean Plate Club. That's not an award you take lightly. A Clean Plate Club award is very prestigious. I've been getting that from my mother since I was probably about one years old and I get it from my wife to this day. I'm never not a part of the Clean Plate Club, so I can understand why this man takes great pride in that, enough to put that in a TikTok alongside his portfolio. Lastly, I chugged my $13 cocktail. That was definitely not worth it like because he, of the Clean Like he dead ass, he dead ass held up the his- food to make sure we got our money's worth. And then we had- two like he actually held up two empty plates and made a clean plate club joke on a TikTok. This is this is the best thing I've ever seen in my members life. members of the clean plate club. Lastly, I chugged my $13 cocktail. That was definitely not worth it. Here's a damaged 97 bucks with tax and tip. Bro, less than a hundred bucks after tip for a night out with the wife? That is dirt cheap, dude. I shouldn't say dirt cheap. It's actually very economical. Look like a nice place. Certainly can probably get away with that without a half a million dollar net worth. But it, I feel like in bought like in a place like that, at that caliber in the city where I live, it pro that would probably would have been like 
at least buck 20, buck 30 after tip, but. And then we returned home to our crying toddler. We love her so Then I checked my net worth to remind myself I can afford this $12 drink. I can't get over that shit. That is so funny, dude. This video is part of the larger like day in the life trend I've seen on TikTok. It seems very specific to finance bros where it's like, oh, this is a day in the life of a New York entrepreneur. And they go through and tell us how much they spend on shit. And it's like, wow, this is incredible. This guy's got me feeling a little self-conscious, honestly. Like I got to check my net worth to make sure I can afford this bottle of wine I'm drinking. Oh, never mind. I don't have to check because I know I can afford this because I'm getting it for a very affordable price from today's video sponsor, Bright Sellers, that I'm excited to talk to you about. Let's take a minute and we'll get right back to it. Before YouTube, I spent years working in fine dining where I was able to taste a ton of awesome wines from all over the world and I absolutely love it. With a good meal, by the fire pit, perfection. That's why I'm so stoked to be working with today's video sponsor, Bright Cellars, because they've made the experience of finding new wines that I love and compare with my wife's delicious cooking an absolute treat. Bright Cellars curates wines from small vineyards all over the world, and after you answer a few simple questions online, they'll send you a box full of wines they think that you'll love. I received my box full of red and white wine because I love both, and as a seasoned cab drinker, I was actually pumped to see this Petite Verdot by Obscura because it's a full-bodied red like cab, but this is a little outside my wheelhouse, and I was excited decided to try something new. So I'm filming some of these B-roll shots earlier and I couldn't wait. So I cracked her open, poured myself a glass and it was literally love at first taste. Going back for glass two right now. First bottle, absolute home run. So all the wines come with these gnarly education cards that give you helpful insights like tasting notes and suggested food pairings among other things. And you get to decide depending on your needs how often they ship you a box. All I know is that having a good selection of wine on hand at all times has always come in clutch, whether I'm entertaining, sitting by the fire pit, or don't wanna show up somewhere empty handed. So huge shout out to Bright Sellers for supporting the YouTube economy. And if you guys wanna show your support while enjoying some incredible wines, they're giving my followers a limited time offer for a 50% off your first six bottle box. Just click the link in the description box below to see what wine best suits you. I appreciate you guys, cheers. This is what $1.95 million buys you in Toronto. $2 million house in Toronto, Canada. <laughs> You're telling me I'm about to pay $2 million for a house and I walk in that bitch and I can touch opposite sides of the house with both hands at the same time? You gotta miss me with that shit, Toronto. Ain't no way. Let's keep it going. How many? It's just 19 floors because it's three feet wide. Listen, the interior looks nice. Of course, they paid a designer to buy some cool shit from Wayfair, like a little zebra couch. Super trendy and cool. This house fucking sucks. Two million dollars? You better lick the underside of my raw ball bag right now. That is, that is absurd. Oh, nice. A little three by three porch. Wow, look at the master, dude. <laughs> Just big enough to fit a queen size bed and then no room for anything else. No! <laughs> and the toilet in the bedroom. Bro, that toilet, this toilet reveal has to be on purpose, right? What a punchline. Look at this. What a fucking punchline. Look at that. Hold on, is the shower? Is the shower also? Wow. I'm fucking dead. If you pay $2 million for this house, you might as well just light that shit on fire, honestly. I'm not saying like, at a different price point, this could be an interesting place to live, right? Unique in a sense. But for $2 million, I'm not shitting on top of my fucking master bed and touching both walls with two hands at the same time. Oh, but it's got a zebra print armchair. It looks so trendy. Get the fuck out of here. You know, they probably took pictures. They got those real estate cameras with the wide angle and they take it from like low. They probably made this place look like 4,000 square feet. And you're like, yeah, honey, let's go check it out. This is right in our budget. You walk in there and you're just like, well, I, I can maybe, maybe I can get over the fact that it's only wide enough to fit me. We can't walk two abreast down the hallway. And then they get up to the master bedroom and the toilet's just on top of the fucking bed, on top of the bed. You know the house sold though. You know it did. I want to meet the people that bought this house and shake their hand and congratulate them on the worst decision they've ever made. We're first time homeowners. We're so excited. <laughs> you got scammed. Before I start this one. Just look, take a look at this dude and tell me you don't feel like you're about to get scammed, right? You just know sometimes looking at people, you're like, yeah, this dude probably 
probably scams for a living. I didn't realize it, but 100% of the trades I've taken this year that were calls, um, so I trade options, right? So all the calls I've taken, I've won 100% of those. Oh, yeah? He, In the bear market? This year, year to 100%. date. 100%? In a bear market, 100% of the trades that I've taken were calls, I, were 100% winners. <laughs> All right, so if you're not familiar with trading options, buying a call option is essentially a bet that the price of something is going to go up. And so far, 2022 has been one of the worst years for the market in like financial history. And this dude's over here on this podcast like, yeah, oh yeah, all my call options, I trade options, right? I think so, yeah, yeah, 100% hit rate. This guy is by definition what you would call a LARP. Someone who buys a fancy suit with some cufflinks and a gold watch and puts a trading screen on the monitor behind him and then he yells at his audience that he's got a 100% hit rate on the call options in one of the toughest markets in recent history. And the saddest part is he'll get thousands and thousands of people to believe him because he'll just post fake screenshots of like profit and then he can run a paid group. And that's how these motherfuckers make money. They LARP, right, as successful traders, but they don't make money trading. They make money by LARPing and then charging you to join a paid group where they just share a bunch of horseshit information. But this is 98% of finance TikTok in the crypto industry, honestly. Yeah, I have a, uh, looks like a 115% hint rate. I trade only Dogecoin and Cumrocket and, yep, according to my portfolio here, made 200,000 million so far this year, so... Um, yeah, if you want to join my Discord, it's only $100 a month, but the money you can make from the information, the, the alpha, the knowledge we're going to share in my Discord is, I mean, you can make that back in like one trade. You're just going to buy a call option on Dogecoin and you'll be rich. Actually, it's so fucking easy. I'm telling you, man, these grifters are just getting younger and younger. This kid's probably not a day over 19 years old. Did one semester at Cornell and now he thinks he's a fucking finance influencer. It's pronounced... Cornell. Also, just a little side note, that is one of the saddest tie knots I've ever seen in my life. If you're trying to come across as professional, you got to fix that thing up. Either ask your dad to teach you or just YouTube wins or not because you look like a clown. Here we go. How much is your car payment? Big boy edition part two. Hey, sir. What is your car payment? Uh, mine is thirteen twenty-five. Jesus kind of Lord. Is 22 Ford Raptor. Okay. You have another payment? I do, actually. Bruh. Actually, my wife's, hers is a thousand. Oh, your wife's is also a, a thousand. Just a cool twenty-three, twenty-five in monthly car payments on a depreciating asset. That seems very reasonable and smart, honestly. Let's see what else they have for us. Hey, ma'am, what is your car payment? Thirteen eighty-six. Holy and fucking what kind hell! What car requires a thirteen hundred and eighty-six dollar payment? A twenty twenty-two Grand Wagoneer Series Three. Perfect. Fucking 2022 dope fucking Grand Wagon here, dog. Yeah, 1386. Costs more than my rent or my mortgage, but I'm fucking whoop skirt pumping in the, the fucking wagon here. Hot shit, dude. Well, but the first one's 1445. What in the Christ is right? happening? The new GMC Sierra 2500 Denali. What's the other one? Uh, it's a wide body CTSV. That's 1161. It's uh, 11 plus 14, that's 25. $2,600 in monthly car payments. I'm getting punked right now, right? I'm de I have to be getting punked. If you wanna buy supercars and fucking yachts cause you're giga rich, like I don't give a shit, do whatever you want. If you have like actual fuck you money, you can buy as many cars as you want. You can probably buy them in cash or get that three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a month payment, who cares? But if you're not wiping your asshole with $100 bills after a wet fart, you have no business spending this kind of cash on a fucking car payment. Oh, Leon, how do you know they're not all rich as shit? Because they work at a car dealership, okay? Absolute malfeasance. I guess this is where this TikTok was taken. They're clearly all like sales associates at a car dealership, which could not be more ironic because if this is supposed to incentivize me to go purchase a car from one of these guys, it's actually made me never want to step foot in a car dealership again because I know that their financial savvy is probably some of the worst I've ever seen. I'm about to make my car payment. I'll even show you. Well, this guy's got receipts, dude. Payments. Look at that number right there. <laughs> That's my car payment. Dang. These motherfuckers take pride in this. Like, this is genuinely sad. This is making my heart sad. This is like, you're just, you're wage cucking and spending your entire life paying for nonsense right here. This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Listen, I'm not, this isn't the time for like a, a, a financial best practices speech. Clearly, most of you know this is probably a little aggressive. 
There are people that love cars and they don't mind spending a little bit of money on cars, but if one of these motherfuckers complains about not having enough money for things they like, oh, it's so tough to be in the middle class now and inflation, like, I don't feel bad for any of these bitches in this video. Do not feel bad one bit. You just inherited $1 million. You have three years to turn it into five million. What would you do? All right, so some dude on TikTok, a, a, a money guy on TikTok, saw this as a great opportunity to share his uh, his knowledge and his know-how, so I'm sure he can eventually try and sell you his course on how to get rich in 30 days. That is worth $5 million we'll and put an offer to buy at a 30% discount. So the building what? is $5 million. You minus the 30%, that put the purchase price at $3.5 million. So you oh, yeah. Oh, that... <laughs> Uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, fine, but just, just go up to the dude selling it and ask for the 30% discount on the $5 million apartment complex. That's fine. Why does why don't, why doesn't everybody do that? Why doesn't everyone do that? I can hear you guys right now. Oh, housing prices are so expensive. Oh, oh everyone's priced out of being able to afford their first home. You can't just work a normal job and buy a home. Well, you haven't asked for the fucking 30% discount. Why stop at 30? Just go up to the fucking agent be like you know what I'm, i'd like to buy this house for 50 percent off Boom. switch to the whiteboard and then do the math <laughs> fuck is this dude talking you're gonna about? take it to the bank and get a loan on the 3.5 million dollars yeah. the bank only require you to put 25 percent down okay. which is eight hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. correct you still have $125,000 left over. Let's just say minus the closing cost fees, and let's just say the closing cost is about $25,000. That leaves you in your pocket still with $100,000. All this can be done within the next 90 days. Let's just say that they were like, oh, 30% off? Okay, cool. And they give you a $5 million property um, for $3.5 million. You're still taking out a loan for 75% of it, which you owe the bank. So you're not turning $1 million into $5 million, you're turning $1 million into an $875,000 loan. But you lost me at the 30% discount anyway, so I, I... Boom! Boom! Oh, you can't afford a house? <laughs> Just go up to the owners and ask for 100% off, and then go to the bank and show them your dick. Life's so easy if you just know these financial hacks. Thank God for TikTok. I think there was some confusion with this. In my last video, I showed myself buying... Y'all see that shooting star? I did not know that was a thing. Missed it. But I digress. In that video, I was buying two $700,000 Rolls Royce Phantoms, oh. one of which I'm sitting in right now. Sounds and this like has been completely TikTok. funded, down payment and monthly payment through Section 8 Guaranteed Rental Income. Oh. So a lot of people got upset and said, earn with the sweat, blood, and tears of the poor. Yeah, hell, hell yeah. Section 8 Guaranteed Rental Income. Obviously, you guys know Section 8 is like subsidized housing for low-income families. Which couldn't be further from the truth. On a standard $1,400 a month rent, the average is around $1,250 to $1,300 paid by the federal government. Holy shit. Also, the American taxpayer. You guys. The poor or the low-income tenant might pay $100, $125. So they're not paying for this car. You guys are. So I want you guys to do something. The next time you file a federal tax return, I want you to think to yourself and wonder... What color phantom is Tom going to order next year with these funds that I'm about to pay the government? Because you sure as hell can't be the government. So you might as well join them and jump in and start buying Section 8 rentals. All right, this, I, you, I can't even get mad at this guy. I can, he's just playing the game. And I, you know what I'm saying? I hate the game. Can't hate the player, though. My man's playing it well. Now that deserves a boom. This is the type of finance TikTok I could get into right here. Knocking today with intern Aaron. Intern we are going to be going to the house that I screamed at and intern Matt try to smooth things over but it didn't go well and we're gonna see if intern Aaron can do what intern Matt couldn't and he looks like uh door-to-door -door sales insurance maybe I'd be up for a promotion okay Aaron let's try it out counting on him hi there this is intern Aaron with Goodman Family Insurance oh my god I can't believe you people could you shut up and listen to me here ma'am here's what's gonna happen I'm gonna quote you on your oh, home on auto oh. insurance and I'm gonna save you money ma'am I'm not done yet <laughs> that's 1000% fake but that's like that's funny as hell that's a good that's a good premise for a TikTok. That one got me. I mean, there's no worse job on the planet, I think, than door-to-door -door sales. Because there's not a single person on Earth that wants someone to show up to their door and try to sell them something. There just isn't. Mormons, on the other hand, I love it when they come to my door and tell me about Jesus Christ and the Church of Latter-day Saints. That's a great time. I kick back with a glass of wine and laugh along with them and tell them to get the fuck off my property. But door-to-door -door sales, woof. Sell me some Jesus. Don't sell me some insurance. Uh, quick shout out to TikTok investors on Twitter. A lot of these videos were curated from his account. Um, solid follow. Elijah and intern Aaron with Goodman Family Insurance here. We're going back oh, to the house with the lady that was screaming at us. 
Uh, we think she's interested still, but she's just not answering the door today. So we think she might be upstairs. So we're going to bring the ladder and see if we can <laughs> knock on the upper window and see if we can get a hold of her that way. Nice. These guys are fucking awesome, dude. I love it. <laughs> Elijah, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous here. You're fine, dude. You're fine. Just Hello? Hello? Shut up, ma'am. I'm making a sale here. Get off okay, we'll leave. We'll leave. Let's go. It's nice to see a little lighthearted creativity among a sea of vapid money TikTok nonsense. Though I will admit, finance TikToks are a bit of a guilty pleasure for me. Boop. Thank you guys for being here. You know what makes me moist as hell. If you could hip thrust that motherfucking subscribe button and do me one favor before you leave and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Can't wait. Peace.